What's up everybody, Alex here. Welcome back to another video. Welcome to a budget haul. I love these. Um, this is just a collection of sort of thrifty-ish finds I have found over the last, um, I don't know, several weeks, month or so. Uh, we'll call it a month. So basically all of these are records that I bought anywhere from a dollar to three dollars. I forget how much everyone was, but it was between one dollar and three dollars um, from various sort of budget bins or, or whatever. So, um, I I'll say this, I love doing this type of stuff. Like I, there's some great local places to do these things and I've gotten pretty lucky. Do I succeed every time? No. Um, but I would say more often than not, I'm really pleased with what happens. Now for me, it's less about like finding, you know, the $50 record for a dollar. That's not what it's about for me. This is about taking maybe a chance on some artists that I'm not as familiar with and being able to dive into their discography for a buck or two, right? So um, that's a number of these artists where I'm like, you know what? I didn't have anything by them or I had very little by them. And so uh, it's just a great opportunity to dive into some of these artists. But I would love to hear from you all when I bring those up, like where should I go from here? What are your thoughts? All that kind of stuff. First, it's Friday. Let's get after it. All right, so there's a lot. Don't want this video to be too long. So we're gonna get into it. A little bit of everything here, if you know me. First and foremost, this was probably the only record from this band, this group that I didn't have with the exception of their sort of reunion stuff. And this is the last sort of formal album again before their reunion. And this is Music Magic from Return to Forever. This is, came out, I believe, 77, right after Romantic Warrior. Sort of marked a little bit of the end, obviously. I mean, they brought back vocals here, which I'm not the biggest fan of, as Trick Korea's wife, Gail Morin, at the time. But uh, yeah, I... It's good. It's good. Musically outstanding. Musically outstanding. I'm just not a big fan of vocals in fusion. So yeah, but I'm glad to have it. Didn't have this. So again, this was a buck or two. Return Forever. Uh, music Magic. This was a fun one. One of my favorite fusion-y musicians. Uh, but really, I mean, when you talk about people who play the violin in that sort of way, there's not a ton of them that come to mind. But the one that really comes to mind is Jean-Luc Ponty, who obviously had an amazingly successful solo career, but also was wildly successful in Frank Zappa's band. And this is sort of where it all began with King Kong from Jean-Luc Ponty. This is um, King Kong, Jean-Luc Ponty plays the music of Frank Zappa. So these are all Zappa tunes that were yeah, obviously composed by Zappa and given to Jean-Luc Ponty to play. Um, this is on World Pacific, I believe. Um, yeah, World Pacific Jazz Records. This was a cool find because this was one of those records that does go for a little bit, you know, maybe a $15 or $20 record that I got for a buck. So, um, yeah, but this was awesome. For a Zappa fan, this is good stuff right here. I was super pumped to grab this. I guess we're sticking in Jazz Fusion World. Uh, really the ongoing uh, steadfast member of Weather Report, one of the biggest fusion bands of all time, was Joe Zawinul in this. So this is... Concerto retitled, uh, kind of a comp that came out of a bunch of stuff that was released on his first three solo albums, I believe. So incredible piano, keyboardist, synth player, Joe Zawinul. Lost him not too terribly long ago, but uh, yeah, great stuff here. Super awesome. Still in kind of jazzy-ish territory, maybe a little bit more funk, fusion, soul. I don't really know. This was a guy that I had heard about forever, and again, depending on the nerds out there to help me out, but I had continuously heard of Brian Auger and then Brian Auger's Oblivion Express, but this was the debut. So yeah, I mean, organ player in a kind of funky, jazzy, soul type way, a little bit proggy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really like this. I gave this a spin and enjoyed it, but yeah, Brian Auger's Oblivion Express. Was super excited to add that. I recently sort of had like a soul, I don't know, reawakening, if you will, uh, thanks to uh, Scott, DJ Vinyl Vertigo, uh, for doing the soul tag because it just woke me up into so many different areas. And of course, this was a band I had known about forever but didn't have any of their stuff. And so now whenever I see it for cheap, I grab it. So this is Deliver the Word Word from War. War is awesome, man. It's funky. It's jazzy. It's it's progressive. Uh, I, it's awesome. I'm all in. So yeah, War, Deliver the Word. Here is a very, very cool band that is very, very, very trippy, kind of coming from that English, folky, psychedelic stuff. Uh, this is the Incredible String Band, and this is the Hangman's Beautiful Daughter, kind of known as their, I don't know, not maybe their magnum opus, I don't know. This is kind of the one that a lot of people know on that classic gold 
um, Electra label from the late 60s. Um, yeah, this was, this is pretty trippy, but yeah, I mean, this is pretty out there, psychedelic, folky English stuff, which means I'm into it. So that was awesome. Didn't have anything from them. Of course, in that sort of folk, folk, funk, soul stuff, you don't get much better than uh, Booker T and the MGs. And again, this was one of those dollar hollers that I had to grab. And again, this is worth a little bit more than that. It's not like a $400 record or anything, but this is Booker T and the MGs, Melting Pot. This was sort of, I think, the final record they had, um, or not, the, the sort of final record with the original lineup that they had, or the classic lineup. Um, of course, on Stax Records, an original here, so... Awesome stuff, man. I love Booker T and the MGs. So this is great. Um, a double shot here. These are, obviously, I've heard about this band for a while. We just lost sort of their leader, um, Canadian band, but I knew nothing. I had nothing of them. Didn't know much about them. So I'm depending on you all. I don't know where these fall in their discography. My guess is a little bit later because they're from the 80s, I believe, or at least one is because of the barcode. But um, I'm talking about April Wine. Um, I picked up First Glance and... Power Play. I know nothing about either of these records. I have not spun these records. I just know that we lost uh, Miles Goodwin um, not too long ago. Um, and a band I just had respect for, just have never really listened or dove in. So yeah, for the April Wine people out there, let me know where these fall um, and what I should be looking at. This one's going out to my boy Sam St. John and any other fan of the Beach Boys. This, you could argue, is where they really started making that big turning point away from surf music and talking about cars and all that kind of stuff, but still before Pet Sounds, but right before Pet Sounds, and that's the Beach Boys today. This is an original stereo, or as I guess Capital would call it back in the day, duophonic. Um, but yeah, Dollar Holler. This was awesome on that classic Rainbow Capital label, uh, which is pretty dope. So um, yeah, this is good stuff here. And I guess one of the first concept records too. Um, Sam, you'd have to help me out on that one, but uh, yeah, happy to have that. Absolutely love that sort of period of Beach Boy stuff. Now, here's a record that I had a reissue of, one of my favorite records of all time, but this was $1 and is on that classic Warner Brothers green label, and you can tell on the back, it's deep purple and rock. This was a buck, some ring wear, jacket's not in the best shape of all time, but all things considered, I'm feeling pretty good about it, and anytime some of those original uh, green label Warner Brothers labels uh, that you can find, get it, and I just, I mean, shoot, uh, you know, obviously Child in Time, Flight of the Rat, man, Speed King, so much good stuff. I love this album, and I'm so happy to have an original. Here's a band from Chicago that I've never listened to in my life. Steve at All the Worlds of Sage, this one's going out to you. I believe this was part of the album exchange that you all were doing with Glenn and Larry and Marsha P uh, and Chris over from uh, Refresher Podcast. But uh, this is In One Year and Gone Tomorrow from the Buckinghams. I have no idea what the Buckinghams even sound like. This was a buck, and I saw that you all were talking about it and didn't hate it. So, you know what? I'm in on it. Cool. I know nothing about the Buckinghams. Know nothing about this record. Whatever. Uh, more Canada rock, huh? Okay, this next one is a four-banger because when you, you know, me, I'm a prog guy. And when you talk about Canadian prog, you're talking about really only a handful of uh, artists, right? Obviously, Rush is the obvious one. You could throw Max Webster in there. Throw all other ones. But for a lot of people in the late 70s and into the 80s, man, they love Saga. And honestly, I never really listened to Saga before I got these, but I got four of them. So let's see here. I got um, Worlds Apart. I think this is their big one. Uh, had a different album cover everywhere, of course, except the U.S. I got uh, Images at Twilight, which I think came out uh, early 80s. Um, as you can tell by the wacky labels. Heads or Tails. Let's talk about that album cover there. What we have going on. I don't really know. And then maybe the most 80s of them all, Behavior. I think that one came out mid-80s. So yeah, these were all a buck. Um, all in just really great shape, original inners and all that kind of stuff. And I never listened to Saga. So I figured a perfect way to dive into that collection um, in that catalog. So yeah, if you, I know I got to get their debut. I heard a lot of people talk about their debut, but if you're a Saga fan, let me know. All right. Here's a record that I see all the time and I've always wanted because it sort of became like a staple in that early San Francisco psychedelic scene, if you will. And that's the debut um, from It's a Beautiful Day, It's a Beautiful Day. Classic painting. But the cool thing is here that I didn't realize, I was listening to this earlier today, I didn't realize that, fun fact, when I was showing Deep Purple in Rock and talking about Child in Time, that the whole sort of basis of Child in Time that is played on the organ from John Lord is actually taken from Bombay Calling, which leads off the second side of this record. So 
that blew me away. I was like, this is the coolest thing. For Deep Purple fans and Child in Time fans, you might know that already. I did not. But yeah, they completely ripped that. I get, ripped it off, whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing. They borrowed it, whatever you want to say. But yeah, I was blown away by that. I like this stuff. This is cool, weird, psychedelic, kind of folky, poppy type stuff from San Francisco. I'm in. It was a dollar. Let's do it. I'm a pretty big fan of Jefferson Airplane, but I had nothing from Hot Tuna. Uh, so uh, this is Hot Tuna. I guess self-titled. Uh, recorded live at the New Orleans House of Berkeley. So yeah, I guess was this one of those, like their first album was a live album sort of situation. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't listened to this one yet, but curious for the Hot Tuna fans. I see burgers all the time. I feel like people talk about burgers. I like burgers. But uh, yeah, I don't know. If you're a Hot Tuna fan, let me know. Uh, here's a band that, uh, I've been sort of slowly building up a little bit of the collection on, but this is why I wait to buy things because I can typically find certain artists in dollar bins, um, instead of spending, you know, eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars on them. I can just wait, get them in a dollar bin, give them a good clean and be okay with it. And one of those bands is 10 years after. So the two I picked up recently are, um, I think this is their second stone to henge. I like this. This is out there. Psyche stuff. And then Yes, stone henged and shh. So I still need a handful more 10 years after stuff. I think this gives me, wow, four or five. But uh, yeah, good, just classic British blues psychedelic rock, man. I'm into it. This was an artist that I brought up on a couple of streams ago as an artist I've heard a, about a million times, but never listened to and heard, had nothing of. But again, a perfect time when you see them to just pick them up. And you know, if you hate it, you're out two bucks or whatever, but I actually really liked it. And that's Leon Russell. So I was able to pick up these two, Leon Russell, uh, self-titled, and then Leon Russell and the Shelter People. So, yeah, I picked up both of these. Good stuff, man. Uh, I hear, like, I don't know, people might hate me for this comparison, but I hear, like, early, like, proto-Billy Joel. I don't know if that really makes sense. But with, like, a more, from a saloon. Does that make sense? Okay. Doesn't matter. This is a fun one. People have seen this record all the time. It kind of comes with a fun story because it's a Roger Dean artwork. Roger Dean was mostly known for doing all of his prog stuff, whether it was with Yes or Uriah Heep, the artist. And so he did this for like this like funk fusion world music band called Osabisa right here. I mean, doesn't this just look like a prog record? Absolutely. But it's not. This is like out there funk world music type stuff from Africa, I think. So yeah, I mean, this was uh, cool. Always wanted to buy this. Again, dollar, two dollar holler, something like that. But uh, yeah, awesome stuff. I'm into it. How about the debut from Steppenwolf without, usually you see these debuts with the big sticker on it that says like featuring, what is it? Uh, obviously the big hit, uh, Born to be Wild. Featuring Born to be Wild. This doesn't have the featuring, so um, you know it's better. I don't know, it's just earlier. So yeah, uh, debut, half Canadian band, I guess, uh, from Steppenwolf. Um, here's a cool band. I love this outwork too. Again, more of that British kind of folky stuff, maybe progressive folk. Dare I say, this looks super progressive. Um, but that's England. Amazing. Blondel. Yes. Um, good stuff here. Uh, this is on Island. So it has that classic Island, uh, record, but, uh, or Island, uh, label stuff. So yeah, I'm excited for that cool album art there. I'm into it. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it is about St. Patrick's Day, so let's celebrate a little bit with some Irish guitar royalty. Picked up two records from Rory Gallagher, or Gallagher, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, calling Card, as well as Pickering Up, Pickering? Picking Up Tattoo. So, got both of these, again, super cheap, couple few bucks, and uh, feeling good about it. Love Rory. Um, so that's a good pickup. Uh, here's a band that, I don't know, I guess you could maybe call them a super group. I don't want to misspeak or anything like that. But I think this was Ronnie Montrose after he left Montrose and then started a band called Gamma. This is Gamma One. Never had this record. Again, it was cheap. Um, so happy to have it now. And uh, yeah, just goes old fashioned, late 70s, hard, heavy rock. I'm into it. Good stuff from Gamma. This is a band that nobody talks about, but I freaking love. They have like fit themselves perfectly in that sort of like 10cc style art rock, but less artsy and more just like cool. Hard Rock, I don't know what you want to call it, but really they became known for some of um, Mutt Lang's earliest production stuff, and that's City Boy, and this is Young Men Gone West. I love City Boy. I got a couple of their records, and their stuff is friggin' awesome, so I was super pumped to add this little promo here. You know, if it's a promo, it's just better for everybody, but uh, yeah, I love City Boy. Good stuff, produced by Robert John Mutt Lang. 
I knew nothing of this guy. Uh, or I, I knew who he was outside of like, you know, the Toy Story thing. But I see this record all the time. I see like Mazzy probably shows it. If other people are into him, great. This is singer-songwriter stuff. It's Randy Newman, and this is Sail Away. Uh, I, I see people show this. I think it's good. I think it's early. I, I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about regarding this. But again, it was cheap. It didn't have anything. I got to respect it. So yeah, looking forward to that. British Welsh band I, that I think sort of proggy, sort of spacey. Um, based on what I've heard, I knew nothing of. Maybe one of the most original band names of all time. Man. Literally. Yeah. Man. This is Back Into the Future Double. Um... I have nothing of man. I know next to nothing of man outside of just sort of, again, proggy, spacey, psychedelic type stuff. If you know anything about man, tell me where to go from here. Um, but yeah, man, good stuff. Uh, and then the last one here, uh, I have a number of copies of, but whenever I see it, I grab it. And the most important thing is they would tell you is to check the labels and make sure you get the pink Capricorn labels, whatever. Uh, I got this for a buck on Monday, just a couple days ago. Uh, All umbrellas at Fillmore East. Uh, I got to clean these records off a little bit. I'm sure they're not anywhere near perfect. The sleeve's a little bit split on the bottom, but man, for a buck. And again, when people tell you they got to get that pink Capricorn, you get the pink Capricorn. So yeah, all the time. Again, I'll probably end up giving to somebody, some VCLT, whoever needs it. But uh, yeah, always good to get this for a dollar, pumped on it, clean up those records, and uh, it'll probably play great. So there you go. Went through a bunch of them there in just under 17 minutes. Let me know what you think in the comments. That would be awesome. Appreciate you all watching. And um, as always, cheers. Have a good weekend. Have a good day. Have a good life. All the things. And we'll chat soon. Take care, y'all. Bye.